Arena in Birmingham, where four more contenders are getting ready to put their courage and skills on the line as they face the ultimate challenge of our gladiators. And two of them will come back and join us for the quarterfinals and maybe share in prize monies of £14,000, but that's only if they get through to the grand final and are successful. And then, of course, we'll send our champions off to America to take part in the American Gladiators before swanning off on a fabulous holiday with their partner on the Caribbean island of Barbados. <laughs> so let's meet our lovely ladies this evening. They are Pauline Oliver... ..and Katie Tanner. What a spring in your step there, Pauline. So they say, so they say. <laughs> Tell us what you do and where you're from. Um, I'm a dietitian nutritionist from Doncaster. Woo! Yeah! Woo oh, goodness. I can tell I'm going to have trouble with you. <laughs> now, it strikes me that perhaps I should be calling you Miss Great Britain. Yes, I think so. Why is that? I've just won the coveted title of Miss Britain in Blackpool in May. <laughs> So we already have a champion on our hands and a champion mother. You've got a little son, haven't you? What's he called? Jacques. Oh, Jacques, not Jack. No, no, Jacques. One has to be posh. Ooh! Ooh. Well, Pauline, I'll let you go off and prepare for the next game, OK? Thank you, darling. See you later. Pauline Oliver. <laughs> OK, Katie, Katie, tell us about yourself. Where are you from? I'm from London. And what do you do for a living? I'm a PA for a firm of chartered surveyors. Any hobbies? What do you do to relax? All kinds of sport, and I love trying new dangerous ones like hang gliding, paragliding. What about the wall? It's something the wall is very important, or it was very important in your life. Tell us about it. I met my husband when I was standing on a wall. You met your husband while you were standing on the wall? What, he was just there? You happened to be standing on a wall in the middle of nowhere? No, we were at a barbecue, had a few drinks. Someone dared me to climb the garden wall, and I was standing up there when he came in. <laughs> Well, I'm afraid you're not going to meet any husbands up there. The only person you're going to be on the wall tonight is me. I hope so, John. OK. I hope so. Off you go. Get your safety equipment on. Well done, Katie. <laughs> so while the girls are getting their safety equipment on, let me introduce you to the gladiators who are going to be chasing them. They are Scorpio and Lightning. <laughs> Let's meet the fellas. They are Richard Berry and Phil Norman. <laughs> oh. oh, I can see we're going to get on very well, Richard. Definitely. Oh, tell us where you're from and what you do. I'm from Darwin and I'm a plastics fabricator. What's a pla what, what sort of things do you uh, make then? Well, basically, we make shop signs, oh. uh, bar displays. Anything out of plastic. Oh, right. Very Professionals in plastics. Ah, absolutely. Now, it strikes me from talking to you, there's nothing very much that you haven't done as far as sports and fitness goes. You've done some mad things as well, haven't you? I can't think of anything I haven't done. <laughs> uh, I've recently swam a mile in a straitjacket. <laughs> Believe it or not. Uh, I've also climbed the Indy Mill chimney, which is 312 foot. That were at, that's at Darwin. That's... Goodness me, so you're going, I expect you'll have no trouble at all with the wall then? Uh, I hope not. No. I hope not. Now listen, you also make your own wine. Yes. What, out of what? Uh, out of fruit. I make it out of kiwi fruit, uh, gooseberries, blackberries, anything. Well listen, will you promise me this? If you get through to the quarterfinals tonight, will you bring me a bottle? Oh, a, a few bottles. Oh, a few bottles, yes, I'll settle for that. Richard Berry, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> OK, Phil, what do you do for a living? I'm a martial arts instructor in Bournemouth, Dorset. You teach martial arts? Got a few supporters. Who have you got along with you? Um, looks like most of the students are there. They're all there. How long have you been teaching martial arts? Uh, I've been teaching about three years now, but doing it 11. How many styles do you teach? Um, I'm qualified to teach four. Uh, oh. Basic first, first level qualifications in four different arts. So you must be a very, very fit man. I hope so. I think so. And what do you do to relax? What hobbies have you got? Um, Martial art. Again. Anything else? Um, more martial art. And anything else? Uh, a little bit more martial art. Well, I think you're going to do very well. Off you go, Phil. Well done, Phil. <laughs> and indeed, the 
gladiators, our fellas are going to be matched against our Saracen and Trojan. are ready for their first event. Here's John Sachs to tell us about it. Thanks, Uli. Our first event is Skytrack, a figure of eight suspended from the ceiling 40 feet above the arena floor. Contenders and gladiators are attached to the Skytrack, and on the whistle, they race. Katie's in yellow, Pauline's in pink. Ten points for the winner, five for second place, and they'll be chased by Scorpio and Lightning, who will attempt to strike the detonator being dragged by the contenders. If they're caught, the backpack explodes, and they're out of the race. It's over to our own Murray Walker, John Anderson. Contenders, ready! Gladiators, ready! Three, two, one! And they're off on the first event of the series. Well, Pauline takes a bad first bend. Scorpio's on her. And detonates her backpack. Katie's away, but look at Lightning accelerate. Full throttle, and the sparks fly as Lightning strikes. Oh, watch your head, Lightning. Well, that was over so quickly. You've got to take a look at that replay. Falling caught very early on. And Katie's caught on the next bend. So both ladies failed to make an impression on the score sheet after one event. Over to the boys. In pole position are Richard in red and Phil in blue, and right behind them, Saracen, and one of our new gladiators, Trojan. Let's take a look at his impressive stats. And as he says, seeing is believing. This one's built for battle. Contenders, ready! Gladiators, ready! Three! Phil and Richard get a good start. Already accelerating away from the gladiators. This event more suited to the Lena Bina machine. Those heavier gladiators having a tough time keeping up with them. Without the gladiators in their slipstream, this race is all about who's going to cross the line first. Phil in the blue looks to be the fastest down the street. Look at this. Richard goes in a turbocharge of the corner, takes the checkered flag and the 10 points. So, after the men's first event, Richard's on ten points, Phil's on five. Moving on to event two, the wall. And standing with her feet firmly on the ground, it's Ulrika. And standing also with her feet firmly on the ground is Katie. <laughs> and she's going to be chased by Jet. <laughs> also looking forward to the event is Pauline. And she's going to be followed by Nightshade. There's Nightshade, our Olympic gladiator. More about her later. For the moment, like our contenders, we have to concentrate on this 36-foot wall they're about to climb. And the only way is up. Three, two, one. Well, Katie and Yellow met her husband on a wall this time. It could be a gladiator. It's a 10-second start before they're pursued by Jet and Nightshade. Ten points for getting to the top, five for hanging on for the full 60 seconds. Here come the gladiators. Nightshade, known to her friends as Deadly, springs onto the wall. Jet on the left side of the wall, making great progress on Katie. Nightshade getting to grips with the overhang. Meanwhile, Jet's on Katie. Katie slips. Jet quick to lock onto that mistake. Pauline still evading Nightshade, not for long. Pauline going down the wall the wrong way. Katie trying to cling on to those five points. Oh, Jet strips it from the wall. No points for our contenders. Katie, you did incredibly well. There's no chance I thought she was going to catch you at all. And then came the inevitable slip. Yeah, never mind. Good fun. It's tough, though. It's a tough climb. Well done to our master climber. Well done. Thank you very much. He's very fast. Very, very fast. Give me a run for my money. <laughs> well, Kate's mum and dad enjoyed that, even though she didn't score any points. Where did he get that hat? A lot of support for our gladiators, who certainly deserve it. Keeping a clean sheet. And after two events, our ladies Katie and Pauline still waiting to score. Over to the men's wall, where Phil is contemplating his climb. As is Richard, who is no stranger to climbing, as we can see from his home video. 
looking like Sylvester Stallone in Cliffhanger. Certainly his attitude is right, as we discovered earlier this afternoon. I've come down here to win it, there's no doubt about it. I've not come down here for a second place. I've come down to win it, but whether I do or not, that's a different story, isn't it? And the story begins right here at the foot of the wall. Phil in the blue there will have Wolf snapping at his heels. And chasing our Iron Man from Darwin, Richard in the red, is Cobra. Clearly a gladiator not to be sniffed at. Three, two, one. 60 seconds to get to the top. The only difference between the men's wall and the ladies is there are two overhangs to slow the guys down. But it doesn't appear to be stopping Richard. Here come the gladiators to try and catch them. But they won't be catching Richard. I've never seen anyone get up that wall so fast. Look at that, 19 seconds. Those hours of training he put in have certainly paid off. Here comes Phil. And a respectable time for him. Leaving the Wolfman high and dry. Go, Phil, go. And he did. And the Wolf won't be pleased about that. Because he and Cobra are left dangling. Well played, Richard. That's probably one of the fastest times I've certainly seen anyway. I'll tell you, the pressure went on there. I go rock climbing, and if I'd have failed that, I would never have heard the last of it, I'll tell you. Well done, Richard. Ten points. Well done. Thank you. Well, also, another one made it look easy. I was going to say earlier on, do you think 60 seconds a minute is long enough? But you made it look very easy. Uh, that was a lucky one, I guess. That was a real blast, though. That was, that was a real blast. Well done, you got your ten points, you'll need them. Well done, well done, Phil. Um, four! Four! I said quiet, I'm trying to be interviewed. Go back in the cage, Wolf! You don't want to say that. Oh, no, Wolf's off the leash. He's lost none of that old charm from the last series. Oh, well, he couldn't catch Phil, but he's going after Richard's family and friends. Somebody's going to have to break this up. Oh, G-Force having none of it. I've never heard of anyone being pom pom to death, but it could happen here. Wolf will be back. Yes, he probably will, but let's hope he does a little better. After two events, Phil's on 15, Richard's on the maximum 20. Next up, Powerball. A new event this season, contenders start at opposite ends of the power ball pitch and are allocated either red or blue balls, which they'll try to deposit in one of the five scoring baskets. Now, the four outer baskets are worth two points, while the centre basket will score three. Those baskets, however, will be defended by three gladiators. Here they come, Lightning, Panther and Jets. Now, in 60 seconds, contenders try and score as many goals as they can. The gladiators' mission is to make sure they don't. Pauline will use the red balls, and Katie will attempt to score with the blue balls. You'll get the hang of it once we get started. Over to John Anderson. Ten dogs, ready! Gladiators, ready! Once a contender or ball is grounded, it's ruled out of play, and they must run to the opposite end of the Three, pitch and start again. Two, Heads down, let's play one. Powerball! Here comes Paul, he shoves Lightning out the way, picks up two points. Oh, Katie misses, Panther brings her down. Pauline doesn't miss, two points. Here comes Katie, dragged down. Girls have to go to the other end to collect their ball and start again. Here comes Pauline, oh, taken down. And so is Katie, lovely tackle. Needs to score, though. They come to the other end, they must pick up another ball from the other end. Katie. Taken down, he says Lightning doesn't strike twice. Oh, in the middle! Three points for power playing Pauline. Lightning pushes, but oh, Pauline scores again. Two points. Katie taken down by Panther. Pauline in the middle. Oh, she dumps the ball and dumps Jet in her backside. He splits. Oh, Jet takes down Katie, making up for that earlier humiliation being dumped by Pauline, takes it out on Katie. And you can see the girls looking physically tired. They've run out of steam, and they've run out of time. Well, that's your first look at Powerball, and what an exciting event that is. Let's check out the slow-motion replay. Pauline uses her muscle to ground the Jet and powers her way into picking up her first points. Katie yet to score. Well, Katie... It was a hard one, wasn't it? You didn't have much chance there, did you? 
Not really. I should have got my husband to practice rugby tackling me because he's a rugby player, but he wears 16 stones, so... <laughs> well, didn't he give you any tips before, beforehand? Uh, a couple, but in the end, it's a tough game. They hit you hard. They hit you very hard. I mean, what was in your mind? Were you trying to jinx or were you just trying to go straight through them? I was trying to get past them, but they hit you very hard very quickly. Well done. Unlucky, Katie. Thanks very much. Pauline, 12 points. How did you find it? I love that game. I've been looking forward to that one because I know that I'm like a lot more muscular than you know, the other gladiators. So this is where I came into my own, yeah? Because of the muscle. You certainly did. Well done, Pauline. 12 points. Let's hear it for the gladiators. Panther, Lightning, and Jets. Good to see you. Great sportsmanship between the girls. After three events, Pauline's on 12, while Katie's on zero. On to the men's events, Richard in red, naturally using the red balls. Phil will be using the blue balls, and he should feel right at home here because contact sports are his business. He regularly gives ladies defence classes and is accustomed to being attacked. Oh, felt bad here. Well, he can certainly take a blow, but I wonder how he's going to take it from the gladiators. He doesn't seem too worried at the moment, which is more than he can say for Phil's mother. She knows those three gladiators will be Shadow, Wolf and Trojan. Three, two, one. This should be interesting. Phil dodges the Shadow. Two points, well played, sir. Up for another blue there. Oh, takes his shirt off. It's in, though. Two points. Shadow squashes Richard. Back to the other end for a ball. Oh, nice little tactic there. Shadow stretches, pulls him down. That won't count because the ball was grounded. This won't count either because that was grounded. And that's in, though. Three points in the middle. Well played, sir. Look at that tackle. Oh, it's in, though. Two points. Phil is remarkable. Not much shirt left, but getting the balls in. Here they go. Up for a split, Phil takes away, but oh no, the Wolf fans on him, takes him out of bounds. Does he really want to go back for more? He's got points, but the battle scars are there to be seen. Oh, Trojan misses, it's in to two points. Oh, then he lost his shorts then. Oh, nice one from Shadow. Takes Richard out there, Richard yet to score. Oh, two on to one. It takes two gladiators to keep Phil down. Richard shadowed by the Shadow, and they're out of time here. As Phil takes a well-earned rest, note the safety equipment, gun shield, helmet, knee and elbow pads. Tough game played fairly, sportsmanship epitomising the spirit of gladiators. Richard, you look like you've got a bit of a complaint there. You don't look happy. I thought I got one, to be honest. Well, I must say, both of you actually got one. You were disqualified on one basket because John Anderson says you were grounded before you put it in the basket. Oh, fair enough. Referee's decision is final, I'm afraid. Right, that's fair enough. No complaints? Uh, no, fair enough. Okay, well done. Phil, battle scars? Yeah, I kind of lost some of my shirt there. Where's the rest of your shirt? Do you know where it is? Hey, there it is. There. Let's have a look, Wolf, wear it in your mouth. Uh, the only thing he has caught. Is that a taste of the things to come? Most definitely. Okay. Phil? Anyone got any sticky tape? Well done, Phil. 11 points. Well done. And let's hear it for the gladiators. Trojan, Shadow, and the Wolfman. Well, Wolfman said he'd be back, and he certainly was. Took the shirt right off Phil's back. After three events, Richard has 20, Phil 26. So don't go away, because we'll be back after the break for some more spectacular action on Gladiators. to the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham where we're just about to set up for event four. And here to describe the event is John Sachs. Thanks, Julie. Welcome to Tilt. So called because those two tilt boards will move forward and back depending on who's got the advantage in our high-tech tug-of-war. The advantage begins with a contender who's on the lower tilt table. There'll be two pulls of 30 seconds duration, scoring the contender five points for tucking the gladiator off or two points for a stalemate. This is a game of balance and strength. Over to you, Willie. Well, first up on tilt, it's Pauline!
as she's going to be pulling against Falcon. Let's meet Falcon, one of our new gladiators, and checking her statistics. Five foot seven, ten stone seven pounds, and looking good to me. Now, if you compare that with Pauline, Pauline is an inch taller, but the same weight, and holds the advantage because she's on the lower tilt table. Three, two, one. Falcon's got to get her tilt table back if she's to stand any chance whatsoever. Oh, Falcon's pulled from her nest. Five points to Pauline. Five points. Let's see if Falcon can even the score. Second pull. Take the strain. Three, two, one. Falcon has got to get that table back. Oh no, she's done it again. She's pulled her down for another five points. Whoa, well, let's hear it for Pauline. She picked up ten points. Falcon, um, not much of a chance there to, to, to pull. Well, that event um, demands a lot of strength, determination and courage. And this lady nah. certainly has it. Nah. <laughs> and second up for tilt, it's Katie. <laughs> and she's up against Panther. Look at that, our very own Miss Universe. Let's check her statistics. This season, she's added a stone in weight, so comes in at the same weight as Falcon and Pauline. Katie, though, is a stone lighter on nine stone seven, but has the advantage of the lower table. Three, two, one. Panther's tilted back, that's the way to do it. Oh, Katie reeling her in, oh, she's off balance, off the table. So, of the first pool, a win to the contender, five points. Katie's used to keeping her balance, as we can see from her home video. Every year, she takes two weeks out of her busy schedule to teach skiing. Certainly no stranger to slopes, now finds herself back on that tilt table for her second pull. Three, two, one. Panther needs to tilt that table back, which she does. Now, can she sustain her balance this time? She's got to pull Katie to the front of her tilt table. But Katie's digging in and staying to the back. Oh, look at that feline face of Panther showing the strain. If Katie is pulled to the front of a table, it'll tip up and tip her off. <laughs> Lots of support for Panther. This looks like it's going to the wire. Oh, it's tough for Panther. It's like trying to uproot an oak tree. Oh, and it's all over. Stalemate gives two points to Katie, giving her a total of seven in this event. Well, Katie, you picked up five points for the first pull, and for the second pull, you picked up two points because you remained on there. Well done. Thanks very much. At least get some points. Yes, Katie's on seven points. Pauline stretches her lead to 22. Over to Uli and the men's tilt. And first up, it's Richard. <laughs> and he's up against Hunter. Let's meet our other new boy, Hunter. And if we look at his impressive stats, you'd be surprised to know he's our youngest gladiator at only 19. Looking at Richard's stats, giving away a lot in weight. That's why this game has been designed with the contenders in mind. Gravity is on the side of the contender. Three, two, one. Oh, a textbook tilt. Hunter quickly back on the table and reeling his man in like a fish on the end of the line. Richard down and out. No cigar. Great debut from our new gladiator, Hunter. Second pull. Three, two, one. Again, Hunter uses his weight to tilt back that table. Great strength. Richard has learned from his last pull. He's putting up more of a fight. Oh, look at that. He's feeding him rope. And look at that. Hunter's hung himself. That looked good to me. He was in control of the rope. Let's see what John says. The result of the second pull, because the contender had control of the rope, a win to the contender. Good call from the ref and good thinking from Richard. I don't think you must be pleased with that result. Pleased with that one, yes. I thought, well, there's no way I can beat him on power, so I used a bit of brains. I thought, wait till he's giving it the maximum pull. 
and just let him go. And he went. Next up in the men's event is our martial artist, Philip. Now Phil draws the short straw and the biggest gladiator of all, Warrior. Let's take a look at the new streamlined Warrior. He's dropped nine pounds since last season for increased agility. And Phil's agility, as we witnessed earlier in Powerball, is terrific as well, but he's going to need more than that in this contest. Hit the stream! Total mismatch in body weight. The only advantage Phil has is the tilt table, but he's lost that. And I'm not sure why he's taking this seriously. Cheekly waving his arms to mum. Now he's getting down to business. And look at that, it's all over. Eat Matt. Second pull. Three, two, one. Oh, look, Warrior eases himself back. Everything under control. Oh, no! I might have spoken too soon. David is shaking Goliath. Now he's taking it seriously. He almost paid the price for his cockiness. Phil tried the same tactic as Richard. Oh, no, he's, oh, he's over! <laughs> oh, look at that. I wonder what hairspray he uses. Philip, unlucky in the first one. Unlucky and then... The second one. <laughs> <laughs> very unlucky in the second one. He was a bit cocky, wasn't he? Oh, he wasted me. Yeah, big guy. Yes, Phil, he's the biggest. After four events, Richard's on 25, Phil's on 26. Moving on to event five, Hang Tough. Pauline's waiting on her platform, and to tell us who she'll be facing, here's Fash. And waiting to get to grips with her is Scorpio! <laughs> Over to John Anderson. Three, two, one. So if you remember from last year, she's got 60 seconds to get across, traverse the 50 feet to the gladiator's platform opposite. Each ring, four feet apart, as Pauline attempts to get herself into that scoring zone and into the points. If she's in the scoring zone, which are clearly marked with red rings, when the whistle blows, she'll pick up five points. If she makes it to the gladiator's platform, she'll pick up the maximum 10. Scorpio coming the other way. Tells me she's put on muscle size and has lost body fat this season. I've got to tell you, she's looking good on it. Oh, she missed that ring. Pauline is in the scoring zone. Now she's got a red. Five points. Or will she get ambitious and go for the platform for the full ten? Look, she's going for it. She's got the ring. Moving in the right direction, but running out of time. What is Scorpio doing? She's stuck in the middle there. Ah! Oh, making good... Oh, she went ringed! Can she hang in there? Four seconds, three, two, it's there, five points. Well done, Pauline. Another five points. I was scared of that one. That one was my weakest because I've had, um, let me see, I've had a cortisone injection in my elbow. So I was very weak on that one. And did it affect you at all? No. Did seeing your son, did that psych you yeah, up more? Yeah, my baby, where is he? I don't know where he is now, but he's safe, don't worry. Yeah, thank you. Hello, Jacques, I love you. This one was for you. Well done. Well done, Pauline. Five points. And next up on her platform is Katie. Over to John Anderson. Three, two, one. Scorpio has something to prove now. She has to make up for that relatively poor performance. She told me her favourite music was Bad Out of Hell, and she's going like one now. Going straight for the target. This is better work. Katie goes left, and so does Scorpio. It's like a game of chess up there. And Katie's just run out of moves. Another one bites the dust. Oh, unlucky, Katie. You said earlier you were a bit nervous about this one. Never mind. I had a good go. At least I got a few rings. Well, you came down pretty hard. I did. 
Yeah, it's tough. It's tough when you're being hung on to by one of these dogs, I can tell you. I haven't got much chance. Scorpio? She had a good grip and I had something to prove. I didn't do well enough on my first go. Well, you certainly proved that. Well done, both of you. Well done. So after five events, Katie remains on seven points and Pauline stretches her lead to 27. You're going to be a gladiator when you grow up. Are you? Don't be shy. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. Smile. Come on, smile. Smile. Show me them teeth. Show me them teeth. On to the men's event. And up on his platform is Richard. And there is only one Saracen. Oh, that's different. Richard runs across the other side of the platform to try and confuse Saracen. Let's see what happens, because on a natural swing, they should go right past each other. Well, it's worked so far. Look how far away he is. Saracen closing down the area on pure arm strength. Richard misses the ring. If he gets it, he'll fly past. Saracen, he misses again. He's going to have to go back, and Saracen is there. He's locking in. He's locked on, and believe me, 17 and a half stones of salt on his back is a lot heavier than his daughter Carmella. But he's hanging top. How does he hold on? Oh, he eats Max. Whoa, Richard, that was a tough one. Once you start going one way, it's very difficult to change direction. I thought he had him at one stage, but. Just the way it goes, isn't it, really? Well, to start off with, Richard, you look very natural on the rings, I must yeah. admit. Yeah, well, I am, yeah. Well, I was. <laughs> Cheers, Richard. Well, it's nice to see, win or lose, he's still a super dad to Carmella, his daughter. And second to go against Saracen is Philip! Three, two, one! Saracen carrying an extra seven pounds a season to fill out his new costume. He's also got himself a new hairstyle done for him by his girlfriend, Chrissy, who he actually met last season as a contender on Gladiators. Oh, he misses a ring. Phil will exploit that mistake, and he moves into the scoring zone. He's got it, five points for hanging in there. Now, will he move on? Oh, the exit blocked, but he evades. Can he do it again? He must move on. Saracen looking very dangerous now. Oh, he's exposed! Oh! How did he do that? <laughs> Phil! Well, Phil, you had him. You had it. I thought I just lost it right at the end. I thought he was going to go. I thought I had it. What did he catch? Did he catch your leg? Was it your waist? I'm not too sure what he caught, actually. It was his bootlace. All I needed was his bootlace, and I had him. How lucky, man. Well done, both of you. Phil Saracen. Let's hear it for them. Well done. That's a first on Gladiators, caught by the bootlace. No scores for the guys. 25 to Richard, 26 to Phil. Let's move on to a brand new event, Suspension Bridge. Thanks, John. And first up on the Suspension Bridge, it's Pauline! And she's facing Nightshade. Nightshade's the new girl on the block, and let's take a look at her stats. She comes to us from the world of athletics. She's competed for Britain in the Olympics of Moscow, Los Angeles, and Seoul. Three, two, one. All the contender has to do is run from their own platform across the suspension bridge to the other platform. The only trouble is there's a gladiator coming the other way. And new to our gladiator armory, meet their hammerheads. Oh, immediately put to good use by Nightshade in a barrage of blows. We can hit, trip, or push your opponent from the bridge. It's rather like Indiana Jones meets the gladiators on suspension bridge. Pauline's got a point to prove here. She wanted to be a gladiator because she feels her overall fitness and strength is superior. At the moment, backing off from the onslaught of Nightshade. Oh, she sticks a wonderful midriff shot in, and Nightshade's down. She, she must get up. She cannot stay there for more than 10 seconds. Oh, she's down again. She can stay up there for 60 seconds. It's five points. She wants to get to the other side. Nightshade defending with her life. Going for a different grip. 
Going low. Oh, it's worked. She's knocked the hammerhead out of her head and takes her down as well. Only one second left. And if we check the replay, Nightshade knocks the hammerhead from Pauline's hands. Pauline, unable to defend herself, forfeits the competition and is knocked down from the bridge for good measure. Just didn't have enough there. Just didn't have enough there. Next time. Next time, Nightshade. You and me. Ooh, looks like a grudge match building up there. If Pauline gets through to the quarterfinals, that's a contest I'd buy a ticket for. And next up to face Nightshade, it's Katie! <laughs> hammer time as they run to face off in the middle nightshade goes straight to work one heavy blow and it's over in six seconds and after six events the final scores in the women's contest katie on seven and pauline well ahead on 27. Now let's move on to the men's suspension bridge first up is richard and we can see by his home video both richard and his family have been taking his training very seriously He's even built his own pugil stick. Unfortunately for him, unlike those posts he's hitting, gladiators hit back, and none harder than Shadow. And looking at Shadow's stats, six foot four and 19 stone will be behind those blows. Shadow's unbeaten record in duel has got to make him a favorite in this event, but he told me earlier he's none too happy up there on the bridge. It was Shadow, it's always hammer time. Oh, he's down. Richard, get up. Ten seconds is all you allow, but look at Shadow. All oh, helping him down. Eat Max. Richard. And there's Richard's coach, his four-year-old son, Lloyd, probably trying to find out what happened after all that training. Next up is Phil, who should be good at this. Two, one. Phil's martial art experts, weapons trained. Well, that ought to be enough to... Uh... Maybe not. The martial arts obviously didn't quite come in handy there, or...? Ex-martial arts instructor. <laughs> Nothing personal, Phil. Shadow remains undefeated, and at the end of six events, the final score for the men, Richard on 25, Phil one point ahead on 26. Well, after six events, we have just two eliminators to go. So we're going to take a very short break now, but don't go away. Join us after the break here on Gladiators! <laughs> It's the most exhausting and the most exciting confrontation on TV. It is, of course, the Eliminator. Time now to move on to the Eliminator. And we've added a couple of new elements this year, one of which is the balance beam. Contenders must run along this before facing the awesome Travelator. Then grab the rope swing, through the paper burst, and into the quarterfinals. Katie looking nervous there, and she should be. Reminding you of the scores, Katie has seven points, Pauline 27. That's a difference of 20 points, each point being worth half a second. And that gives Pauline a 10-second head start. Well, now she's contemplating the course ahead. And the son, Jack, looking tired. Good job, he's not running. Pauline, you will start on my first whistle. Katie, you will start on my second whistle. Three... Two, one. Now Pauline has 10 seconds to make her impression on the high and low hurdles, one of our new elements to the course this season. Kate anxiously watches her disappear, and there she goes. She gets started as Pauline meets another new obstacle, the rope climb. Now this really saps their arm strength before they face the hand ladder. But she's up. Kate's done well. She's nearly up the rope. Now, Pauline's traversing the penalty pit on the hand ladder. If she drops from there, she'll be held for 10 seconds by the referee before she's allowed to continue. And she seems to be doing all right so far. Katie's on. She's down, hesitant about going across the rolling beam. But there she goes. 
safely across to the car. Oh, Jack is not well pleased about that. Well done, Mum. As she slowly but surely makes her way up this cargo net. And look at Katie. She's made up that ground. Incredible. Every contender I've spoken to from last season has told me how tough this cargo net is. You feel all the strength draining from your body. And see how slowly they're going. But they seem to be neck and neck at the moment. After six events, they really do have to dig deep into the courage bank and find that energy from somewhere. Pauline, just ahead of her, she'll have to go to the furthest zip line. And it's a 90-foot leap into space as they come down for a smash down. Good landing. Here comes Katie. Now they move across to our third new element, the balance beam. And it's not much room to manoeuvre there. Oh, Katie slipped off. Pauline doing well. Second attempt for Katie. She's lost the balance again, and that will cost her. Now, can Pauline sum up the energy? Up that travelator. Can she do it in one reach for it? Yes, she grabs the rope. Deep breath. She runs it all and into the quarterfinals. Well done, Pauline. And Jack can't believe it. Mama's done it. Here comes Katie. And this is her own individual contest now. And she wills herself to grab the rope. And she's done it. She's completed Eliminator. And her husband, there he is, can feel proud of her. Pauline, that was a painful one. It was very painful, but I wanted it. I wanted it badly. She'd already caught you off by the net. What was going through your mind then when you saw the net scramble? I just thought to myself, there's no way. There's no way I'm losing this. Not with 10 points. No way. Well done, Pauline! Katie, well done. That was real grit and determination. Thanks, John. It's pretty tough. It is hard work, isn't it? But have you enjoyed it? I've had a fantastic time. Thanks a lot. Well done, Katie. Well done, you two. And we'll hand you over to John Sachs to tell us about the men's event. Thanks, Fash. Well, Richard's on 25, Phil's one point ahead on 26. That one second is worth just half a second head start to Phil. Well, Philip, there's not a lot in it. No, no, half a second is not much of a start. Looking forward to it? Oh, I'm going to give everything I've got. I'm sure you will. And, Richard, does this mean that you'll give me a bottle of wine if you win this? Definitely. Oh, yeah. Well, if I win this, I'll crack open a bottle of wine to celebrate, and if I lose, I'll crack open a bottle of wine. <laughs> and get drunk. And get drunk. Well, I'll see you both at the very end. Best of luck to both of you. Well, these contenders have been great sportsmen all the way through this show. It's really sad that one of them has to lose. Phil psyching himself up there. This is the moment of truth. Is half a second going to be enough to beat the Iron Man of Darwin? This one is too close to call. Philip, you will go on my first whistle. Richard, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. The whistles were straight after each other and the contenders are straight after each other. This reminds me of the competition last year uh, between a paratrooper and a marine where they were neck and neck throughout the eliminator. And look at this. There's not a lot in it. Both pumping those hand bikes. Don't forget the men use the hand bikes over the traverse pit. Exactly the same rules. If they fall, they have to wait 10 seconds. Now onto the rolling beams and across together onto the cargo net. Richard's family going crazy now as he moves up the cargo net. Oh, slip there. And it looks like Phil taking advantage of that as he gets to the top first. That means he goes across to the furthest zip line, 90 feet down to the crash mat. Good landing. Time for Phil to beam up as we meet the balance beam. There's Richard just behind him. Phil crosses the balance beam. There's Dad. Come on, Mom says I can hardly build this. Now he attacks the travelator, and so is Richard. He's caught him up from nowhere. They grab the rope. Two runs out. Two points to Paul. There'll have to be a video replay. Richard, that's about as close as any of our eliminators come. We are, in fact, going to have a video replay 
to see who, in fact, is the winner, and we'll come straight back with the result. Well, Phil, as you've heard, there's going to be a video replay. Are you nervous, and do you think you've got it? Well, that was close. I can't tell. That was too close. Too close. Did you expect it to be such a close challenge? Oh, definitely. Richard's been strong all the way through. He's been a really good uh, competitor. Well, that's one of the best contests I think we've seen. Well, let's wait and see what happens. It's one of the hardest ones I've had. OK, let's see what happens. Well, I'll tell you what, it's certainly one of the most dramatic. What a marvellous end to our first show. But let's check the replay. Phil seems to burst through first on the left. Let's check again. And look at that. Yes, Phil comes through first, followed by Richard. Let's pass the good news on to Fash so he can tell Philip. Well, enough of the suspense. We've seen the replay. And you've got it, Phil. Well done! You've got it! Another winner! That was close. Very close. Phil? Oh, I didn't expect that. As I said, it was, uh, that was a tough race. He's been tough all the way through. And... Uh, I'm, I'm pleased to do it, but he was, he was good. Well done, good. Phil. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Richard, what can I say? It really was incredibly close. It was very close, yeah. I made a bit of a mess of the net, really. That was didn't know. But then you managed to catch him up because, in fact, you both reached the top of the travelator at the same time. Yeah, I just, just didn't quite have the power, you know. Never mind. I'll crack that bottle of wine up. And I hope to be sent one as well. It's been great to have you on the show. Yeah. Lovely to see you. Well yeah. done to Richard too, ladies and gentlemen. What a great contender. And as Richard said, his problems began on the cargo net. Up until then, it was synchronised eliminator. But a little foot fault threw him off balance. There it is. Phil exploits that advantage and goes on. But later on, when it comes to the travelator, somehow, from way back there, he catches up Phil on all fours. Well, congratulations to our winners. And next week, you can see four more contenders face the ultimate challenge on the Gladiator! Whoever thought of combining a game of darts and a pub quiz is a ruddy genius, I tell you. Quizmaster extraordinaire Jim Bowen is next with Bullseye. And don't forget there's more new gladiators next Sunday night at 7 on Challenge. So get pumped for your dates with Fash and Ulrika. Do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators. Both contenders and Gladiators have been trained for this competition, and safety equipment is mandatory.